can bless you and curse your enemy. It is good. And even there, we do not even want the Lord to curse the enemy. Far more to curse our friends or to curse us. We need the Lord's blessing on everyone. Amen? That's why the Lord, even Jesus said, bless those that persecute you. Bless those that do evil to you and curse you, all manner of evil to you. Bless even your enemy. This morning, it's another day. It's another time, another moment. In fact, it is a good day. Many times when I at service, I get so accustomed to my wife by me. In fact, we are together for so long, like we partly grew up together. It's more than half of my age. So long, we are together. We do things together, see miracles together, praise God together, defeat the enemy together. So then we get accustomed to each other. Amen. We have prayed for a lot of people together. Go into different ministries together. Amen. In other words, it's not until we come here we have had ministries. We have been or had ministries in some of the worst places Worst places. The worst place or two worst places I think you can ever have a ministry is where leprosy is or people have leprosy and in the prison. The hospital. Convalescent homes. We went to all those places. And that is partly every Sunday. When we leave here, or probably sometime through two or three Sundays in a month, we always go out on the mountain top in the valley, among homes in villages. So, if you see Brother Graham looking old now, I work hard, both in construction, security, cashier in gardening and the work of God. I work very hard. Amen. So then that's why I need prayer because I will not say that I'm tired. But if I say it, the Lord knows. Amen. So I'm saying not me alone that work hard for the Lord. You too. You can confess that you're on the road a long time. But we are not tired yet. And when we are very tired, the Lord will know. Amen? Yes. So let's trust him and depend on him. Now, last week, not last week, but a few weeks ago, I spoke to you on time. Today we'll be going back into part two of time. But I'll start off by saying good morning to God's wonderful people here and around the world. Small and great, rich and poor, saved and unsaved. I greet you in Jesus' wonderful name. The name that is above every name. The name that when we call, we see miracle happen. And we see the enemy take its flight. The devil hit the name of Jesus. And that's why we need to really keep on pounding his head. 
mention in the name of Jesus, that fear will seem miracle. As I said a few weeks ago, I spoke with you about time and define the word time. And in case you forget, I will paraphrase it or go back into it again. What is time? The word time. The meaning of time. All the year, all years past, present and future. Or yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I'm talking about time. Secondly, portion or point of this. Get it well. The second meaning of it, or the same meaning, but the second word of it. Portion or point of this. And number three, occasion instant. Occasion instant. That's what time is all about. The Apostle Paul was seen the last time in Rome. You heard me? That was the message when we preached the last time. It was about Paul speaking to the people of Rome, whether he was in Rome or not, but he spoke to the people of Rome. That was the last part of, 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 uh, of time in our message, the last time we spoke. Today, as we go back, or we go in, in the first Corinthians, Chapter 7, 29 to 33. Think about the Craig Habit, right? First Corinthians, chapter 7, verses 29 to 33. The topic on time. The Lord spoke to few men on time. And what he said to them, it was to pass on to the rest of the world. Get it clear? But the world became so busy. And the servants of God less concern and stop praying. They stop praying. Let's stop now and pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, that we do not get too unconcerned or tired that we would not pray. Because, you know, Lord, prayer is what will take us to you. And prayer is what will bring you to us. When we pray, Father, we see things happen. So speak through me and for me today and everyone that I honor my voice. Bless us to the Lord and help us to live right, to walk right, to understand it right, and to do it right. And when we learn to do that, Father, we'll be better people for you. So help every one of us or everyone around the world, and we that are here and abide in love. Forgive us for we have failed you, Lord, and take full control of our life, as we ask all in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, save somebody today, even as I preach this word, now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Even as I said, that the believers they stop praying like before. 
And there is a great alarm from the master, saying, do not stop now, because time is at hand. Listen, and listen well this morning. We will be hearing from the Lord as the Apostle Paul listen and pen it down. As the Lord spoke, Paul wrote, even as John did in the book of Revelation. When the Lord spoke to Paul, Paul wrote everything because not everything that he would remember. And he knew the trouble that he caused when he was young and was hired by the high priest to go and kill Christians. When the Lord saved him, he had to go and win people for the Lord. Amen. He killed plenty that was already saved. Bring them back to the high priest that they would destroy them. And he thinks he are doing God a favor. But probably his last trip to Damascus on his horse, the Lord knocked him down. He got blind. And the Lord tell him, continue your journey. What men would have to carry you. But this time they'll be carrying you to Ananias to pray for you where you will see again. Do we get it plain? I hope all people out there hear me. That was his last journey. Doing wrong. Or working for high priests. This time, he'll be going to Damascus to start that ministry where his name will change from Saul to Paul. And from doing evil to doing good. But a great man of God, which is Ananias, had to lay hands on him and pray for him that the scale of unrighteousness would fall off and the brightness of righteousness will appear on him and in his eyes. I hope we get it clear. Yeah, we'll be hearing from the Lord this morning as Paul penned them down and give to the people of Corinth. Remember, as we read last week or a few weeks ago, he had already been to a lot of churches. But today, we'll be speaking about Corinth and Ephesus. But first, as you look at Corinth, chapter 1, 1 Corinth 7, uh, chapter 7, sorry, 29 to 33. Praise the Lord. You pause a little bit to get it going. The Lord is saying today, live like your last day. Live holy before time because time is short. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Let me get my scripture. First Corinthians seven twenty nine.
But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they have none. And they that keep, they that weep as though they wept not. And they that rejoice as though they rejoice not. And they that buy as though they possess not. And they that use this world as not abusing it for the fashion of this world passeth away. But I would have you without care, care, carefulness. He that is unmarried careth careth for the things that belong to the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But he that is married careth for the things that are of the world, how he may please his wife. Paul was speaking. We know that Paul was an unmarried man. Before he started his ministry for the high priest, or this I am not sure, but I know before he started ministry for God, he was unmarried. And he was speaking to, un, to men that are unmarried and married. Was he saying the unmarried man is more concerned of the things of God than how he would take care of the things for the Lord. But when he's married, he concentrates on the things of the world, how he would please God. It has plenty more than that in that verse or in the chapters. But I just stop there. Amen. And when he speak that way, he was not only referring to the man, but both the man and the woman. So if I get it clear, what Paul was simply saying in his word, if you're married, you do well. But if you're unmarried, you do better. Because when you're unmarried, you're more concerned about the things of God. But when you are married, you're concerned about the things of the world, how you can please your wife. This morning, to be honest, I wish my wife was there to get a part of it, but she'll get it anyway. Amen. She'll get it anyway. Paul, as a servant of God, knew that the work was plenty and the laborers are few. He could not stay one place too long because his calling was to speak to the world, but purposely to the Gentiles. He had to buy the time. Remember the Lord tell us to do that. Buy the time. When he knew the people of Corinth got the word, he went over to the people of Ephesus. And as the Lord God spoke to him, he alerted the people as we look at 
Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14 to 20. We understand what was said to the people of Corinth. Now we step over to Ephesians. It's on the board, right? Anybody have the mic close to them? Brother Craig, as I said, from... Uh, Do you want me to read it? Yes. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. You want me to go on? Oh, yeah, you go until 20. 14, 20, 14, 5, 14 to 20. See then that thou walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what is the will of the, what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So as Brother Craig read, from 14 to 20, in the 14 of chapter 5, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now, without the explanation, some people will run with that and say the Lord, say, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you life. That's what he said, actually. But in that verse, he was talking about Spiritual deadness. You that are dead in trespasses and sin, get up, awake, and when you awake, stand up or be alert because someone can get up and sit down on the bed or get up and sit lying down. But he was simply saying, Get up and be ready to listen. Get up from that deadness or that spiritual deadness and Christ shall give you life. When you have that spiritual light, then you have a spiritual life. They both work together. The spiritual light and the spiritual life. So when he wake you up, you see differently. In other words, you, can, you just begin to see. A dead man cannot see. One that is dead spiritually cannot understand, they cannot see. They may be intelligent as they think they are, but they are lost and blind. But when the Lord wake you up spiritually, he open your spiritual eyes because he has quickened you from that deadness. He quicken you. He make you alert, ready to go. You must be awake and get up. Not only awake, but get up from your bed. Get up 
from your deadness. Get us, get up from your slumberness. Get up from your weakness. Get up from your slothfulness. Get up and ready to live for God. In verse 15, it said, See then that he walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. In other words, you're saying, be conscious or watchful. To be circumspectly aware is to be conscious or watchful. Sometimes you go in business places and tell you, watch your step. I think I said it many times. Watch your step. Do not bunk your foot to fall down. Know where you're going. Watch in front of you. Sometimes, and all times, it's important to watch ahead of you. Right? I remember coming from home past that street close by to come here. Though I watch left and I watch right, but as soon as I move again, move off again, a vehicle passed full speed and collided with me. That's few years ago I had the other truck. Not that I didn't watch. I watched both sides and I saw, but there was a boat on that side I could not see far off. But I saw when I watched the first time and the second time, two glints. As soon as I move up, I hear bangs. We collide. The Lord telling us this morning, be watchful. But he's actually saying to the lost man, awake, get up. And even people, many times that are born again, sometimes they go sleeping. Sorry. Sometimes they go sleeping because they became carnal. You hear me? And the Bible said to be carnally kind of minded is death. But sometimes we live so much with the world and like the world that they become careless. And we begin to sleep because we do not concern anymore. But the Lord is saying actually to that lost man, get up from your deadness and I will give you light. And he's saying to the one that is carnal, be careful, for carnally minded is death. When, you're carnally, when you are a carnally minded, carnally minded person, it's like you are lost. Do I say it plain enough? The Bible said to be carnally minded is death. When you rob on a lost person so much, you become just like them. You become carnal. And it's like you're dead. You have one little chance. And what it is, because God saved you. When you say, Lord, have mercy upon me, save me. So then he might whip you out of it. Or he might even kill you. You hear me? Church, you hear me right? Here and out there. You need to hear that. If you claim to be born again and you continue on sin, the Lord will take care of you if it is to cut you off. But he'll do something that will not bring shame on his name. But that is for those that are born again, actually. Because sin can never enter heaven. God forbid. He said, redeeming or buying the time because the days are evil. That's verse 16. He says, do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Study the words. But that's as far as me. Know the word. When you study God's word, you will know the word. 
and we live for God. That's what Paul said to Timothy. He said, Timothy, Timothy, yeah, Timothy, Spedazos parasphemy. Story, young man, to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, you're saying, don't mess it up to mix it up. But study God's word. Live for the Lord. He said, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Get that clear? Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Not any spirit, the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, there are many spirits that are in the world. We have lying spirit, we have killing spirit, we have alcohol, which is a spirit. I hope you know that, right? You have demonic spirit. You have soothsaying spirit. You have adulterous spirit or fornicating spirit. Just name them. There are lots of spirit out there. It has spirit that will possess you. Will make you crazy or mad. But be sure you are filled with God's spirit. Which is the Holy Spirit. Many times... I walk, I think, one of the street, and there is a young man, his face always red. I think he might be a Hispanic young man. He always, face always red. He's so filled with that kind of spirit, which is alcohol. And I always speak to him, and the time he more, more when he speak to me more is when he's drunk. And always want money. But you can't give people money when they're drunk. You've got to be very careful. When they're sober, they will not want to come to church. Far more when they are filled with that alcoholic spirit. I'm saying this morning, we have a job to do as believers. A great job. Speak to people, not only when they're drunk, but speak to them when they're sober so they could understand you. The Lord said, or as Paul, the Lord spoke to Paul. He said in verse 19, speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing and making a melody in your heart to the Lord. You may do that and people think you're crazy. They can say what they want. Just make sure you're speaking to God. You're praying to the Lord. You're singing hallelujah. You're shouting out loud enough that your neighbor might even hear you. It is good if they sit down and listen to you on the other side and say, Take a passe, or what's going on? <laughs> or you might use French or Spanish or English. What is wrong with my neighbor out there? What is wrong with them? It is a good thing that they can hear that, to be able to say that. That just means something is going on, right? When you can do that for the Lord, he said, give thanks, or giving thanks always for all things. Unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Give thanks. Do not use your time foolishly. Give it to Jesus. And he will show you how to use it for his honor 
and for its glory. Remember to buy the time. Redeem the time, for the days are evil. We are in evil days. If you want to believe me, sometimes turn on your TV. From almost every time you turn on your TV, TV, you're hearing about a robbery by here and a robbery by there, a fire by here, a fire by there, a killing by here, a killing by there. Not much good news. Most times it's bad news. We are in evil days. We are in rough times. The Bible said that perilous times shall come. Perilous times are already here. So let's buy the time. Yeah. For we have not, as Paul addressed the people of Hebrews, as we get there in my closing, Paul, he addressed the Hebrews. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 and 16, Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Brother Paul, uh, Brother Craig have it on the board already. He said, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but as in all points, Tempted likewise as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. We have an high priest. And he knows everything that we are going through and everything that we have been through. And the Bible said, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, or our sickness and pain, or whatever it is, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet we don't sin. Somebody asked if Jesus could have sinned. No. That's why God created him for that purpose, to destroy sin. Sin cannot destroy sin. Or one with sin cannot destroy sin. Or one that can sin cannot destroy sin. For the devil know plenty things. You hear me? The enemy know a lot of things. And if he know that you are a sinner or you can sin, he will know exactly where to touch you. He tried it on Jesus. He could not win because the Lord was already above him. The Lord was perfect and the Lord made it plain even when he was about to be crucified. He said, the enemy is here, but he has nothing on me. Nothing. And it is so good when we can say the enemy have nothing on us. But can we say that? Yes, we can. Because of the blood of Jesus. Right? We may want to say, he has something on me. No, devil. You have nothing on me. Because of Jesus. In fact, you have to go to him first. Before you come to me. 
That's the mistake that we have as believers. We think we can walk with our head bent down because we make a mistake. But Jesus took care of that long time at the cross, even before the foundation of the world. And not only that, that verse that I love, that the Spirit make up intercession for you or for us with groaning that cannot be uttered. So when we become so weak and we cannot even pray, the Holy Spirit step forward and pray for us with our prayer that you cannot understand. And all you've got to do is say, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know how weak I am. You know how weak I am, Lord. But help me, strengthen me. I want to live for you. I want to grow. I want to be a better person for you, Lord. I want to do what you want me to do. But though I am weak, but you are strong. And just depend on the Lord. Don't grow careless. Or believe you have a high priest that will take care of you. No. God forbid. He that is born again should not continue in sin. God forbid. Live for the Lord. Or as I said, if you continue, the Lord will whip you and whip you so bad that he might even kill you. You cannot mess up God and think you're doing him a favor. No. I heard someone say that long ago. Right in that church. Oh, the Lord has to look out for me. The Lord has to look out for me because if you're not, it's his name that is in trouble. You better think again. If you have that same idea, think again. Don't go sin and say, if the Lord did not take care of you, his name, that mess up. No. Go and do it a hundred times. He's still God. You get me right? God is still God. But he will get you. He will get you for lying and say that you are born again when you're not. Or for saying, Lord, forgive me. And you're just joking, playing with God. We can't play with God. God forbid. Verse 6, and it said, Let, therefore, let's, let us, therefore, come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. There will be always a time of need for us while we are in this life. You hear me right? There will be always a time of need in this life. You know why? We have not reached to the stage of perfection. We are still in the flesh. So we have to pray daily and say, Lord, I need your help. Dispatch angels to help me. Oh, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Because I'm tired. And it seems like I cannot make it. The Lord knows better than you or better than me. Whether we can make it or not. But call on him. It's our duty to call on him. Because he has made us in his image and likeness. That we would have a voice to speak. One can never ever get too weak. Not to be able to speak. He might not be able to speak physically from his mouth. But you do not know what's happening in his heart. It's he and God alone that know. That's why I believe a lot of people that live very bad, but yet they born save. They die save. If you get me right. We are no judge to say he die lost or he die without God. Because that person may be on his bed for a month, for two months. And they cannot speak. They're in a coma. 
and you do not know what happening while they're on the bed. The only time that cannot happen is when you can't function anymore. When you can't function anymore. That's why in my convalescent ministries or ministries outside of the church, when I used to go witnessing in those prisons, in the convalescent home, in the leper home and those places, I would speak to people. When people die in bedside, I would speak to them. And sometimes I tell the people, if you can understand me or hear me, just squeeze my hand. I will do it that way. I have met people the next to death or as I turn my back, they die. I pray with a lot of people. I went to a lot of people dying bedside and prayed for people. But I'm saying, sometimes they look so sick, like they're dying. When you hear the shout, they get up again. Or when you hear the shout, they've gone home. Sometimes they have gone to meet the Lord. Sometimes they have gone to Christ's eternity. But we do not know. Our job is to do the work of God. And when we can do the work of God and do it effectively, we will say, thank you, Lord. Maybe I have not done my best, but at least I try. You get me right? So you that are on my voice here and out there, Redeem the time, for we are in evil days. We are in rough time. In fact, we hear anything that are going on, even in the election, and people call it sweet sour and sour sweet. I've never heard more lying in my life than now. People lie dry right before you. And they drink it with a, like a cup of water. Like nothing ever happened. And not only on one side. Get me right. I'm not blaming no side. Both sides lies. Everybody lies. And all we've got to do is to live for God. I think Brother Craig was sleeping. <laughs> but, but he's awake. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so whether... As human being, you agree with that side, or you agree with the other side. All human beings lie. Amen? There might be one that worse than the other, but all lie. But who is the worst? That is not me to tell. Leave that to God. Amen? Though we have common sense and we can see for ourselves, but let us keep our eyes on the Lord. And do it right, for the time is coming by your time. Amen. That's the message this morning. Praise God.